Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll MMA Podcast. I'm your host, Sky. We got your host, Damian, Jace, and CJ in the building. We are back. The second podcast of the new year. Uh, let's go ahead and get straight into it. We did have uh, UFC Fight Night, Ain't Goliath versus Johnny Walker. Um, how did y'all feel about the card? <sighs> Sorry. It's <laughs> me thinking about the card itself. <laughs> Um, are we doing on a scale of 10? Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to start out this year with a uh, a 4.5. Oh. And, that's given, and that's given a full point just for Jim Miller. Full point. <laughs> Damn. It started off fire, though. It started off with three KOs. Nah, Jason is cold-blooded. <laughs> I'm going to give it. I'm going to give do? it. Yeah, for real though. I'm gonna <laughs> give it a six point five. I'm gonna give it a six point five for starting off the year. It has some fun fights, some good knockouts. It was some good stuff going on. I think it was about two or three fights that were kind of iffy, but everything else was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I only got to see the main card, so what I seen, it was okay. It wasn't anything like I don't know. I wasn't as excited for this card in the first place, so it was hard to you know, feel some type of way about it, but at the end of the day, it's the first fight card of the year. People mm-hmm. got knocked out. It, some fights went the distance. There were some good fights, so it was cool. I'll give it a yeah. s- seven. Um, I'll give it a, a solid seven, too. Like, I feel like it started off with the right energy. We got some knockouts. Uh, Nicholas Mata, he got to get his get back, you know what I mean? Because he, had, he got starched, and then he had that one fight where technically he would have lost, but then the it had to be a no contest because the ref pulled him off like while he's being choked out. Um, and so that he was went that inside. fight. Yeah, so he went back inside there and got his win, got his little KO within a minute. Um, oh, wait, wait, before, to... wait, 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 before we go any further, y'all giving this six seven and y'all giving two ninety one like like a nine? Like what the fuck? What do you, make, so, make it make sense? Why are you going all the way back to September? Because I'm just trying to get like a scale of like what do y'all consider? Brother, that's last year's yeah. shit. We leaving that in last year's. I shit. know this. I this know is this, 24. I know, this, I this, know is this, tw- this is 24 this, business now. Th- this can't be the same man who sits up here and talks about uh, Sean Strickland dominated Israel Adesanya over he here did. talking about ratings. Like we're not even <laughs> going to do that. We not. I can't even like take you seriously when it comes to rating something because he deboed him. Uh huh. Um. So yeah, I thought that it was good. It was solid. You know, shout out to Jim Miller. Shout out, uh, Jim Miller. We're yes. gonna get into the fight news that was dropped tonight too. We're gonna mm-hmm. get into that. Um. How would y'all feel about the main event? Uh, Ankalaya versus Johnny Walker. Johnny got dropped and finished. Um. In true Johnny fashion, how is too. brother snoozing over somebody getting knocked out? <laughs> like you can't please this man. <laughs> oh my uh, god! So, <laughs> Yo, I mean, hell well, no. I mean, I do, I do have an insatiable appetite. But beyond <laughs> that, um, you know, the first round was a glorified sparring session. Yeah, I mean, just because someone gets a finish doesn't mean like it was a good fight. You know what I mean? Just like you have great fights that don't have any finishes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, you also just... could have had five rounds of nothing. It went two rounds. Ain't yeah. Life pushed the action and got him out of there. Broke his nose. And Johnny Walker is the funniest guy to get knocked out. Every time he get knocked out, he looks like a cartoon character. So, <laughs> For real, so. but there was there was like massive implications on this fight in the first place. So you know mm-hmm. the the first the first round was more like a you know seeing each other out. Yeah, because you don't oh. know what the fuck Johnny Walker is gonna do. That motherfucker is crazy. You got to play it safe. They both got knockout power, so psh, I feel it. Yeah, I think, look it what happened. Unf- I think it was <laughs> unfortunate because I think the first fight should have been um, a disqualification. Mm-hmm. And Goliath mm-hmm. clearly knew what he was doing, clearly threw that strike. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. What do y'all think about Ink Goliath coming out saying that he is a better content- title contender than Jamal Hill, the, the former champion? I mean... I didn't- we we the people only remember what we saw last, bro. I haven't seen Jamal Hill in a motherfucking minute. Nah, that's fucking nuts. How you gonna say you are a better title contender than the former champion, the champion who had to relinquish his belt because of an injury? Like you're just talking shit. You you, you sound dumb. Damn, but he's damn. I know she ain't talking to me. No, no I'm not talking to Damien. I'm talking that's to Angelia. 
That's what I heard. No, but I, I agree with Damien, though. Uh, Jamal's last fight was last January. And like I always say, he didn't take no picture with the with the gang. He got hurt. And he's <laughs> probably going to be hurt for a while, too. The Achilles hurt injuries, it takes a while to come back from that. Shout you know, Ankle Live? Exactly. But it and ain't I, his that's fault what I, that he didn't fight. That was the UFC. The UFC was holding him back, waiting for Yuri's punk ass to, to heal up. Yeah, and that's that's what I said on my live today. Jamal Hill definitely ain't got no Kobe money, so it's probably going to exactly. take him a little bit longer to heal up. So I, we just got to keep it pushing. We got to keep it moving. When Jamal's all the way ready to come back, I'll be going for Jamal. I'm fine with, with Ank Aliyah fighting next, but to come mm -hmm. out and say that you feel like you are a better contender, if Jamal was healthy, ain't no way you jumping in front of Jamal. You just sound oh, dumb. Oh, yeah. Nah. Yeah, nah. he's nah. not jumping in front of Jamal. Disagree. No lies were spoken by Ank Aliyah. Okay. Well, uh, apparently we'll see Ankoliev whenever we see him. Nobody really cares. Nobody's beating the drum for him. Um, but no one's I did beating pick the drum him. for Jamal Hill. Yeah, people are. Um, I do. I did pick Ankoliev as my 2024 end of the year champion. So Dang. you know, it, hey, it it is what it is. He's, what it is. He started the year off on the right foot for us. I, I did pick Ankoliev to win the fight, so you know I ain't mad at it. Uh, didn't we all? Yeah, we all did, right? Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah, we all pick Ink Goliath. We all, uh, I think, did all of us pick Jim Miller? Y'all might have. Uh, pick I picked Jim. Else. I think I, did. Think I did. I don't think Damien did. I okay. fucked up on the Ricky Simone fight. Uh, no, we didn't do Ricky Simone. We did. Oh, uh, we didn't Manil do it. We did. Manil oh, Kate we did. We did Manel oh, Cop. True, we true. did Manel yeah, Cop. Yeah. And that got pulled off because your boy over here missing weight. Yep. Talking all that shit, missing weight. Um, because he'll talk about the bull, news. trying to bully little niggas. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, let's go ahead and get into this weekend. Before we even get into the news, let's get into this weekend's card because it is the pay per view of the year. Um, not of the year, but it's the first pay per view of the year. Um, and we got your boy Sean Strickland taking on Drick is to Pussy. Um, Duplissy. You didn't say his name right. His name is Duplissy. <laughs> regardless Duplissy. of that, he, regardless uh, of that, Pussy got power, and I'm hoping he go inside there and smothers. Ooh, the pussy do got power. Hey, power. Hey, hey, uh, hey. power. hey I'm, I'm <laughs> there you go, Jay. <laughs> we don't agree and on much. We agree on that. And make you do something strange, baby. <laughs> can, 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 can we just say before we get into it? This is like the weakest looking fucking car I've <laughs> it's Canada, baby. ever seen. Ever. Neil, Neil Magny as the feature fight <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> That's how they treat Canada, man. Get out of here. This might be the weakest card I've ever seen the UFC pull on, try to put on. As a pay per view. As a pay per view, correct. Yeah. This looks hey, like a fight night. I'm all right with it, bro. It does look like a fight night. The fights coming up in the middle of the year are gonna be fire. I already know. So let's get let's get these little fights up out the way. <laughs> You're right. We still wanna it's, we still wanna it's see like a, we still wanna see like a placeholder type of fight, you know, just mm -hmm. wet people's whistle a little bit, little mm -hmm. little appetizer, a little appetizer. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, but there are a lot of Canadian fighters on here, like pretty much like when you started off looking from the bottom to the top. Uh, you have pretty much Canada, uh, Canada, Canada, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Canada versus the world. Um, on pretty much every fight on here, there's one fight right here where there uh, a Canadian's not fighting. Let's see, two fights, and yeah, so there's four fights where a Canadian's not fighting on the card. So you know the Canadians get to come out, they get to see some of their fighters, they get to come support them. Um, mm. Let's Let's let's. It, it's. I'm pretty sure the card's going to end up being better than what it looks like on paper. That's typically what happens with these kind of cards that don't have that big mm -hmm. star power uh, going on. Hey, shout out to Brad Katona. He's on the card. Two time tough season winner. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. Um, Arnold Allen making his you know comeback after 
losing to Max Holloway. We're going to get into Max Holloway and all the Max Holloway news in a bit. Um, taking on Mo- Mozart Ivalov. How y'all feeling about this fight? Mm. Ivalov. This is probably ride all that nigga. This is my this is my uh favorite fight on the card. This is the one I'm going to pay attention to the most. Um what? I'm I'm going to go Ar- 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 Arnold Allen. Okay. What? Big yeah, I'm running player. with you too. I'm running with you too, Damien. Uh Ivalov, he had a tough fight with um Diego. Diego right? Lopez. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had a tough fight with him. And Ivalov, he doesn't show too much as a fighter. And uh double A, he's been in fights with top notch people. He may not uh he's won most of his fights. That fight with Max, he did well, but that is Max Holloway. So mm-hmm. I think Double A is gonna do do better. <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna be pulling for Double A. He appreciates your service. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Um, um, I, I think. <laughs> what you got, Orioles? E- Evolve. No, it's some sunflower seeds. <laughs> Evolve hasn't fought since May. That was May of 2023. When he fought mm. Diego Lopez, so I'm thinking to myself, wow. like, what happened? Like, he, he did he have an injury or something that like I wasn't aware of? Um, that'll be real interesting to see what happens. I am, I'll be rooting for for Arnold Allen, but I feel like Eva Law was going to get it done. Fair. You feel the same, Jace? Yeah, man. Actually, I'm not. I don't. Yeah, hundred percent. I just. I don't know. Art Allen is cool. I fuck with him. You know, he's, I think when we look back on his career, we'll view him as like a favorite fighter kind of a thing, not as like a true contender kind of a, a person. I, I, I wouldn't even okay. say he's a favorite fighter. When's he going to become that? Damn. Like Darren Till? No, really. Damn. I mean, like, when's he going to become that? Like, his, his greatest feat was losing to Max Holloway. Yeah, but like, I, I guess I'm saying that in a sense of like, I, I find him to be like a pretty exciting fighter. You know what I mean? He has uh, no, he has no TKOs, no submissions. But he be, be fighting. About. But he be fighting. <laughs> he be banging. Yeah, he do be fighting. Now, CJ, you remember when we was talking about Arnold Allen? And this, this is why I set you up like this. I'm gonna call and I'm gonna find them clips of you talking about Arnold <laughs> Allen, talking how Arnold was a nothing. Now all of a sudden he's an exciting fighter and you like him. This is crazy. He's an exciting fighter. <laughs> he is. I'm looking forward to seeing this fight. Yeah. Besides the, a, the the main fight, of course. Yeah, can we just skip it and go straight to the the, the main event? No, nah, we got to talk about our boy Chris Curtis. I don't like Chris Curtis. I don't know oh, what really? it is about him. I just fuck don't like that him. nigga. Yeah. I don't fuck with him. Is it because he's best friends with Sean Strickland? That's the only uh, he's a, quality. He's a, he's a he's a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> so Jay should like Damn. him a lot more then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not sure hey, what that for the means. record, we, we don't discriminate against our white fighters. No, no brothers, our white brothers, our white brothers. Our white brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're John uh, Strickland. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm saying that's not that's not why I don't like him, but I don't know, man. There's just something about his like personality. I'm, I'm just, it's just not clicking with me. I don't fuck with him. Yeah, same. He cheesy. All right. Well, we got Neil Magny. Versus Mike Malak. <laughs> oh, I mean, y'all, oh, man. y'all this, is, this, is, this is the main event. They want y'all to pay $80 for it. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, my, I'm going Mike Malak. Me mean, too. And I hate to the, say that. It's not February yet, so I'll be going for dang. Mike Malak. I'm like, God damn. Because Neil Magny, I'd be like, what are you be doing in there, bro? I know you in there just to get a check, but it's like he's not exciting at all. He seems mm-hmm. like he don't even want to fight anymore. So, uh, come on, Mike, do it for the Canadians. Uh, I'm actually go for Neil. I think he is gonna get it done. Just like fucking decision, winning by boring. Points, be point fighting, or he's gonna fucking catch a submission somehow, sneaky little submission or something. That's my prediction. I, I abstain. It's one of the top three. You gotta pick one. No. <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna go with Mike Malop for the for the co main. We got Raquel Pennington taking on Myra yeah. Bueno Silva. You know I'm rocking with My, Myra Bueno Silva the whole way. Same. Not it's only is she out there finishing chicks, 
But she's talking shit. She's making it exciting. She's she doing a good job at finishing and, chicks. And I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to see her against uh, Juliana's big mouth. And I have yeah. her as my future uh, champion at the end of the year. So mm-hmm. yeah, she got to take those steps. I like Myra. She good. She a killer mm-hmm. too. And she's mm-hmm. good on the mic too. No pause. Um, she's strong. She's younger than Rocky too. Rocky just be mad boring. She's a veteran, but I'd be like. Like Jay say, ah, she's a snoozer for sure. Mm-hmm. Snoozer. You know Jay ain't picking nobody in this one. I abstain. <laughs> <laughs> Boring. That's right. <laughs> I got so. I think Myra finishes her. Yeah, mm-hmm. me too. TKO. Yeah. Sure. If not that, then submission. Submission. Um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Rock uh. game. Yeah, Silva. She taking it. And then the main event, your boy Sean Tr- Strickland taking on Drinkers to Pussy. Um, Damien, I mean, Jace ain't going to be able to choose. Those I are know. both his white brothers right there. He ain't going to be able to choose. <laughs> his African brother versus his American brother. I mean, t- take the mic, Jace. That's a I, mean, I, am, I, I, I am African-American, supposedly. <laughs> so, are you? That's crazy. Yeah, that's what they say. What so that's what they call me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so hey, to, be yo. fair, to, to be fair, I am like uh, beyond elated for this fight. Uh, so many possibilities, so many dreams. Also, though, you know, I'm, I'm in my feelings. I'm in my feelings. These are the two best middleweights in the world um, by far. <laughs> um, and it's just very difficult to pick one because they are the best of the best of the best. So I'm just really struggling right now to to have a decision. Who do y'all got? I'm going to do pussy all day. Hmm. Who you rocking with, Damien? I've been saying that. Yeah, same. Now, now oh, go CJ, I'm sorry. I'm rocking with DDP. And it was just like not, I'm not a fan of either one of these guys at all, but I was talking on my live today. I was like, I can't be in a room with Sean Strickland. I just can't. I, he just a person I can't be around. So DDP is a little bit chiller than that guy. And I, I'll rock with DDP. It's going to be a super interesting fight because they're both unorthodox. They're both fight weird. I was We were watching the Embedded and we're like, man, DDP is so awkward and he's athletic, but he looks like he's unathletic the way he throws kicks and stuff. And he's strong as hell, but he's also riding high on the roller coaster right now. So I'm a I'm a roll with DDP. So so let me ask y'all this: Do y'all believe that DDP is going to get it done, or do you hope that he gets it done? I believe he's going to get it done. Mm. I believe he me possesses too. the skills to get it done. I believe his grappling is better than Sean Strickland. Um, oh. There there's I I just think he's going to get it done. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, y'all know how I feel about DDP. I, I don't like him. I, yeah, I'm like CJ. I can't stand either one of them. I feel like I had to choose the best of, you know, what what's the saying? Like the, the best lesser of, least of two evils. The lesser the of, two of two evils. evils. Here we go. Yeah. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, like, I'm never going to rock with Sean Strickland ever. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's up forever with him. Like, And then him sitting up playing the crybaby victim right now is crazy to me. Like then on top of that, threatening to stab DDP if DDP mentions his father again, and him being like, "Hey, I don't care about. I'll throw my whole life away." I'm just like, "You're a fucking clown, dude. You're a fucking clown. You're the same guy talking about people being men being soft and pussies and this and that." And now look at you. Yep. It's, it's, I'm going. I'm going. My pack. My picks are most of the time for who I really think is gonna win the fight. Versus, like, who I'm pulling for. Unless it's Tony. There's certain people, yeah. There's certain people. Yeah. So, who you got? DDP. You think that with him potentially getting the dub, that he has the better storylines coming out of this fight? DDP? Yeah. Yeah. For sure, he has Israel Adesanya next. Yeah. You think Izzy should get a title shot next? I do. Well, you're I'm all up, you're all about the story, so th- that's the next story. They're not gonna put nobody else in front of him. 
No, it, it's too too big of a storyline. Too much yeah. real hate there. Too much drama there, and it sets mm-hmm. itself up. You know, Izzy lost to Strickland. He by the time he's ready to come back, now DDP is at the top. He's claiming to be the first real African champion. Israel, I mean, it's Chef Kiss International Fight Week. If they oh, want to be, a, on if now. they want to be up I ain't under got Connor. no money for that. I don't got no if money for that. If they want to be under Conor. Uh, I don't know, man. Man, Conor ain't gonna fight. He say he gonna fight. That fool ain't gonna hey, fight. And you know what's crazy about this whole thing? Is that your boy Jared Cannonier is nowhere in the talks. He really Scott, I was be. just I was just about to say that because who who else is who else exactly? I'm like they're not gonna book DDP and uh Cannonier. Who yeah, there ain't no story. Nobody cares about that dude. And it sucks because you know he's I care doing a lot dude. better now. Stop <laughs> playing. Stop playing. Hold There's on. No didn't Dave? Hey, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Didn't Damien was like, yo, Cannoneer, call me. <laughs> didn't he say yeah, that? Yeah, he got yeah. crazy. That yes. was Red Box One. <laughs> 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 he's, trying, he's, trying, he's trying to beat Cheeks. Trying to beat Cheeks. <laughs> Chill. Whoa. Why you got to go there with it? I mean, why else do, why, why else do you have someone DM you? Just, just saying. Oh, it's a train, man. bro. We training. Choo choo, choo choo, choo choo. Hey, who's right like who on the train? I, can't. I, gotta, I gotta watch every single thing I say, huh? Bro, you have to think so hard on this podcast to not let them watch it. <laughs> oh man, you know what we should do is start a tally, and whoever has like the least amount gets like you know, everybody else got a cash out from a hundred, something like that. Like, <laughs> what? I feel that's me. Like I don't feel like I run into any like a lot of those. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that. Oh, real quick, any fights from this last previous weekend that y'all want to that y'all want to nominate for being like knockout of the year, submission of the year, anything like that? Because I'm nah. we keep it track this year for real, for real. Nothing. Nah. Um, Ooh, nah, nah. Um, let's quickly because I know Damien got to get up out of here. Um, let's quickly <laughs> just take a look at the news that was announced for UFC three hundred. Um, dumb, dumb. You hold on, hold on, hurt. hold on, hold on. Jace, who'd dumb. you pick for the fight? I'm still thinking. Uh, he he gonna try to weasel out of this. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm just. Still I knew he was it. gonna win. I knew it. <laughs> I'm always right, hundred percent of the time, all the time. <laughs> I mean, I was. I am hundred percent so far in the year. I'm just saying. Hundred <laughs> percent all the time. If y'all have not heard. The blessed Max Holloway is taking on Justin the Highlight Gaethje for the BMF title. Sky, what's wrong? Your voice sounds a little bit like uh, the downcast tour. You don't. It's Max Holloway fighting. Why aren't you elated and thrilled? Because now I can't go to UFC 300. Mm. But why? Because I don't. I don't want to go to any more Max Holloway fights. It's too much anxiety. It's too much. Like even when we thought that he was gonna be on it, I, I told Jace, I was like, man, I don't know if they put him on it. I might not be able to go to the card because I just can't handle that. And then, um, yeah, so now he's on the card. It's a risky fight for Max. Um, yeah. They also very. announced. They yeah. also announced Jim Miller versus Bobby Green on UFC 300. That's, that's a, a nice. That's a tough one to pick. That's a tough one to pick. That picks out a heart string that pulls that heart strings on both ends for me. Facts. Yep. They both uh, old school vets. Yeah, I fuck with Bobby Green. But I think at the end of the day, I'm going to have to go for Jim Miller. I'm going for Bobby. It's a green season, baby. Yeah, I'm going for Bobby. Yeah. For me, it's nothing against Bobby. I, I, I fuck with Bobby. Y'all know that 100%. I'm just, Jim just me, been around more. Yeah, longer. he's just older. Like he, he, He's long in the tooth. Like, he got you know X amount of fights left where Bobby's mm-hmm. going to be styling, profiling for at least another three to five. You heard? Yep. Mm-hmm. Damn, I don't like this fight for Max though. Like I, I oh, that's a tough. That's like one of the toughest matchups I feel like for Max. It is. Like I do not want to see him get beat up by Justin Gaethje. It's by far the worst. Like y'all know, we've been talking about it. I've been saying it for a while now. It's the worst fight for Max Holloway to take. Um, but at the end of the day, go back and watch Fazia versus uh, Gaethje. You see the speed. You see the um the footwork is working. Um it, you know, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. Uh, one thing I do like is that a lot of people are doubting Max. The more they doubt him and when he pulls through and wins this fight, y'all ain't gonna have shit to say. 
Here, I love here, it. Here's my issue with That'd this fight, nice. especially pertaining to Max. What does this do for Max Holloway? Absolutely. I was thinking the same thing. It's BMF. It's at 155. You know what I mean? Like, and if he loses, or even worse, brutally knocked out in some kind of way, oh. um, you know, all it does is just hurt and tarnish him. And you know what I mean? Especially with everything going on at like 145. You can say, oh, it's at 155. It doesn't matter. But we know in the back of our heads, like, it does. I don't it think does it matter, it, it, him. <clears throat> especially if he. Oh God, man, I don't even want to say that. If he goes in there and gets beat Tony. up bad, or it, uh, fuck, uh, you know, I'm gonna keep good energy. Max can do something. Max can get in there and do work. Gaethje gets hit a lot. I just watched Gaethje versus Charles right now, and I know they're not the same fighter, but. Max has speed. He has combos. He just work on some of his footwork here and there. He'll I'm have not, a chance. Let's I'm not act talk. like he's just going to get and get washed out. Like I was talking. Exactly. Motherfuckers is acting like he's a fucking rookie who just now is fighting Justin <laughs> Gaethje. But that's okay because y'all going to learn the hard way. Same way that we all thought that Sean Strickland was going to go inside there and get beat the hell up by uh, Israel Adesanya. And then we were shocked. There have been plenty of fights. We were like, oh, this person's going to kill this person. Da, da, da. And then it doesn't happen because these are professional fighters. And always remember that this is a fight. Like CJ says, if there's time on the clock, your ass can get rocked. One thing I do want y'all to know, because y'all like to talk about, oh, like I seen somebody in the comments have posted like, oh, you know, if Max Holloway gets hit as much as his previous fights, then he's going to go out. And I had to go and hit y'all motherfuckers with some stats because a lot of y'all just keep repeating the same stupid ass rhetoric, but y'all don't actually know what the fuck you're talking about. You're just spewing a whole bunch of bullshit that you've seen another MMA content creator make. How many times per minute does Justin Gaethje get hit in the head? Don't worry, I'll answer. 7.5 times. How many times does Max Holloway get hit? Don't worry, I'll answer. 4.4. Your boy Justin Gaethje is getting rocked all the fucking time. He's constantly taking fucking damage. He's constantly getting hit. He's almost getting hit double the amount of times uh, that Justin Gaethje is pulling out. That Justin Gage is just pulling out. So, although we know that Max Holloway does not have heavy hands, he's not going to go inside there and one-punch KO Justin Gaethje. At the same time, what is he? He's a, he's a, uh, come on, you know what I'm trying to say. He's a point volume, fighter. A volume, he, 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 striker. He, he, volume a, striker. A volume striker. He's a volume striker. Punches and, and if, bunches. Yeah. And if <clears> he can, <throat> obviously, they, they got to be training for the fucking calf kick. He only, he only going to take about three of them, Max. Max three calf kicks before it might be over for him. You know what I mean? But if if he is using his speed, his volume, and his footwork. Yeah. Hey, and peppering this man. Good luck. Have we seen Gaethje go all five rounds? I know he's been in a five-round fight, but have we seen him mm-hmm. go all five? No. This is a bad fight for Max. I'm going to stand on that. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, like, it's y'all tough. Over y'all, listen. Y'all over we here delusion. preaching hope. Y'all over here preaching hope. Yeah, hope and hey, dreams. Hey, same thing, that y'all, same thing that y'all, why y'all didn't want to watch Sean Strickland versus Izzy. Same shit that people say I, all the fucking time. I know. I hope it's I'm wrong. That's why we love That's why we love this sport because anything can fucking happen. And everybody be thinking one way. Then Vegas be hella upset because they done lost all their fucking bread. Because they were so Israel sure Adesanya about something. knocking the fuck out of uh, Alex Pereira. Everybody was talking about, oh, 4-0, 4-0. Y'all were going crazy with the 4 and O's. Afterwards, y'all being quiet. Mm-hmm. I can't wait till April, the week before UFC 300, to talk about this fight more in depth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, I got a slide. All right. We'll see Thanks you. for having Peace, me. Brother. Have Peace, a good love, night. and yes, chicken sir. grease. Love Later, y'all. Um, there also was PFL versus Bellator, which was announced. Yes, um, exciting. Today. And I'm calling it right now. It's going to be a Bellator sweep. How Damn. y'all feeling about the fight? Sweep, the fight. huh? Yeah. Wow. I think uh, Pitbull might lose. Well, I'm hoping Pitbull loses to what? Pinedo. I really, yeah, I really like Pinedo a lot coming out of the PFL. He's a young cat. And it's just, I just want something new a little bit. So I'm hoping that he wins. I'm hoping that he loses. I like Pinedo a lot at 45. I 
like him too. I like his story. I was happy to see him win the championship as well. Yeah, um, so that's a super tough fight versus a uh, veteran. But the Pitbull brothers, they've been kind of looking on their downside lately. So yeah. that's that's the only hope for the PFL. And maybe uh, Ali's son, uh, grandson, that might he might pull through too. But everything else, it seems like Bellator is going to pull it off. But I'm yeah. excited for this card. That's a lot of good names on this fight card. But I was thinking, I'm like, right, this is like a big card for them. What happens after that, though? Who else is gonna fight after that? They don't. They 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 stack the decks on this card. That's dope. I'm excited. I'm thrilled. Sh shout out to uh, Saudi Arabia trying to get. What I was they just for. about to say that. Trying to get what they pay for. If y'all didn't hear, they're canceling the first uh, UFC Saudi Arabia allegedly because they weren't happy with like the bullshit the UFC was trying to throw out there. They're like, nah, nigga, we gave 20, 20 mil tickets. We're gonna have to get some some real fighters going on and shit. Saudi looking like the new fight capital right now. All the big fights are going over there. A nice. lot of new, a lot of fights are being made out there. And just in case y'all thinking about going to Saudi Arabia to visit, don't, don't do it. <laughs> do not do it, especially as an American. Well, shout out to uh, my old sack, my pops, because he was just there this past week telling about how wild it is out there it's just a very listen i'm all about the muslim countries i've been to a lot of them i've been to egypt tunisia turkey jordan but like saudi arabia is like old testament style you know what i mean like laws are very 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 strict it's a dry country you know what i mean god forbid that uh you know you are not even a, a part necessarily of the LGBTQ plus community, but even just like support it. You don't want that smoke, you know, Saudi Arabia still does public floggings. They still do mm. public <laughs> beheadings, you know, so you don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Have um, you been there? No, I've never wanted okay. to go there just because <laughs> of the government. Um, I don't want to say too much because I love life. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Rest in peace, Jamal uh, Pashogi. Um. Yeah. So the Saudis, you know, they're taking over. They're paying Francis and Ganu. They're trying to get everybody out there to do the thing. Um, it's definitely confirmed that it's not going to be. They're moving that car to the apex. Um. So, I was hoping that they would put. I was hoping they would put um, your boy Islam on the card, but I guess he's hurt. Well, I was watching his interview with uh, Ariel, and he was just like, he's just good. Like he's not gonna fight until June or something June. like that. Yeah, around June. Yeah, he I had an interview with Ariel. Uh, not uh, him, but uh, Ali. Mm. He had an interview with Ariel. Was it last week, CJ? Ali don't, so, talk yeah. to, Ali don't talk to Ali. Don't talk to Ariel Hawani. They got beef. Oh, then maybe it was Brett. He was talking to somebody. Oh, okay. Akamoto. Yeah, and he was asking about Islam. He's like, "Oh, Islam will will go in June. I guess they're trying to do him June and November." And he was talking about how like no one's gonna fight in Ramadan except um, what's that bum's name? Oh yeah, uh, Bilal. Hey, that's what real men do. Um, they show up and they fight, regardless of what's going on. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens with the Saudi. Now, luckily, they did not make this card, the PFL versus Bellator, they did not make it a, uh, a pay-per-view. So I think that that oh, really nice. helps them so that people get an opportunity to watch. Oh, I'm a lie. I was Never like, mind. what? It is a pay-per-view. It's Never on the mind. zone, They're isn't it? They dumb. They dumb no, again. No, it's on uh, ESPN Plus. Yeah, pay per view. Yeah. Damn. Now why they want to go and do that? Get this bread. What bread? Hey, there'll be twenty five people who who pay for it. Hey, at the end of the day, let's talk about how the Saudis are disrupting the combat sports game, right? 
Because without the Saudis, we don't even get uh, Nganu versus what's his name? AJ. No, the Anthony first one. Johnson. Fury. Oh, uh, Tyson. Tyson. Yep. Yeah, we don't even get him versus Tyson Fury, right? But because the Saudis don't care about losing money, which is what they did, and they continue to do, uh, we're getting these fights. Like because they don't care about losing the money, it creates like this. Oh, you know, get the bad culture, so on and so forth. These pe people are able to get paid. How do y'all feel about that? Like just looking at the sport, like having this entity where, you know, you have a company who is not selling pay-per-views, not making any money on these events, but they're willing to shell out, you know, millions and millions of dollars. I guess it's how you define disrupt for me. Go on. I mean, so like for, for me personally, I don't care how it gets done or who makes the money. Um, as long as I get to see the fights that I want to see, you know, mm -hmm. and for that, I'm all for it. Now, a broader sense, right, of just capitalism as a whole, right, because everyone will not everyone, but a lot of people obviously are selling their souls, quote unquote, to go get the bag, which y'all always talk about. You know, we were going at it last week about the bag, the bag, the bag, you know what I mean? And for me, it should be more about the bag. But obviously, a lot of people don't feel that way, and it is what it was. You mean more about the legacy? For me, yeah, I think so. Okay, because you, you had said more about the bag, and I know last week you were saying you were more so about the legacy. So I, I am. No, no, yeah, I, I am. I was yeah. saying people today now, like, are you know how y'all were saying like, get the money, get the money, get the money. And I'm like, you know, that's the energy, and it's not the Saudis, right? It's like Floyd who changed all this game of just. Bag, bag, bag. You know what I mean? Like, bag is cool. You know, you got to eat, you know, but like, to what extent? To what extent uh, are you willing to, to sell your soul for? Uh, to the extent that I'm literally losing brain cells and could potentially be a vegetable. I could potentially not remember my name, how to stand up, how to pee, how to poop, how to take care of myself, see my children grow up. To that extent, uh, if I'm going to risk it, I want to be able to make money. Hmm. CJ, you know. well, what we're talking about right now is like I have a son, so at the end of the day, it's always going to be the longevity for my kid. At the end of the day, and if people do have kids, I will rather them go do as much as possible so their lineage is going to be secure. At the end of the day, like I said, man, you could be John Jones, and if you don't have nothing, you're not going to be able to go to get a mortgage just because your name is John Jones. So hopefully they do, like I said last week, hopefully they do the right things to secure that money and do the right things with their money. But when you're talking about the disruptors, sometimes you need that kind of thing in a business so everybody else opens up their eyes. They're like, hey, man, these guys are doing business over here. They're putting on the fights that everybody wants to see. They're making the business happen. It's good for the fans. Like, I'm not like a big boxing fan, but boxing's coming around. They're having a resurgence where more people are starting to pay attention to boxing because Saudis getting the fights that we want to see done. Like, I never would have thought that Francis would be getting the big fight so soon. I thought it was going to take longer than it is. And uh, to fight like AJ, that's crazy. So shout out to them. I don't mind yeah. the disruptors. We need that sometimes. I, I, think, I think it's good for the fans, but it also... <laughs> The undereducated fan just sees this as, well, the Saudis, these people are paying for the fight. How come the UFC did it? How come Bellator did it? How come this mm -hmm. did it? And they don't understand how the money works. They don't mm -hmm. understand that the Saudis have almost unlimited money to where the only reason why these fights are actually happening, the only reason why, you know, they're getting the amount of money they, they are is because the Saudis are putting it on. No other promotion can put it on and pay the fighters the same amount that they're getting. So I think like the undereducated fan has a skewed idea as to why things aren't happening. And they start setting these expectations that like, oh, if they're doing it, you should be able to do it too. And it's mm -hmm. just not the same. You 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 have people who are comfortable being $50 million under. What company here, what 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 MMA company or even boxing promotion? None of them are going to go fifty million dollars under just to put on a fight for the fans, just to create um, 
the ability for fans to want to come over and and go to Saudi Arabia. So that essentially that's what they're doing, right? Saudi Arabia wants people to tourism wants to recreate themselves um, and become the sports capital because they're not just doing it in combat sports; they're doing it. They're trying to do it in every sport. Um, but I, I see you shaking your head, no, Jace. Yeah, I just adamantly disagree with you. What do you disagree with? Uh, I guess just all all aspects of it. Um, I just think to myself that like these companies, like y'all know me, I've been said for time after time after time that the UFC, U- USA, the UFC um, takes too much money. They don't pay their fighters enough. You know what I mean? Like that balance needs to be way more balanced. So I'm a big supporter of fighter unions um, and try to give, you know, some, some of the power back to the actual fighters because they're the ones who actually land out on the line, not the promoters. Again, no one's saying like you can't make some money and obviously like, you know, operating at a $50 million d- 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 deficit is not what I'm speaking to. But the UFC could put on these fucking fights if they wanted to. You know what I mean? They just refuse because. Because A, it's like, okay, I like want to, you know, quote unquote, like protect my brand. And then, you know, paying these fighters crumbs, you know what I mean? On crumb, on crumb. And hey, be happy with it. You know, I'm just not, I'm not with it in any aspect. But even if you take the UFC out of the equation and we go back to boxing promotions, boxing promotions aren't doing it either. And that's why they're not doing it either. It's because of the fact that they don't have this unlimited money to be able to pay, you know, this fighter versus that fighter. That's why we have, a, you know what I mean? And so it creates this idea that because you're doing it, they should do it too. Um, should the fighters should. get paid more? How? How when they don't have that unlimited money? How when your fights aren't actually generating it? If we look at if we look at how much Francis got paid in his last fight versus Tyson Fury versus how much the fight... Well, we'll, stop, mu- we'll stop, stop there. Stop it there because we don't know how much Francis got for his last fight. There's speculation. Let's let's go bare minimum ten mil. Bare minimum was ten but mil. But you can't That's even say that. But you can't even say that because you have no idea. They said Francis has said that it was more than what the UFC offered him, which was uh, eight million a fight. So then the bare minimum could be eight point one. All right, let's say eight point one million. Okay. Right. Um, if you. I forgot my train of thought when you started asking me that. I forgot where I was going with it. So, anyway, I mean, at the end of the day, be, because they don't, they do everything in in such like Doak and Clagger, Doak and Clagger, Doak and <laughs> Cloak and Dagger, Cloak and Dagger, because <laughs> they do everything so Cloak and Dagger. You, no one actually knows. Everything is done behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Special bonuses. You know, all we know is when stuff is released by commissions, right? And they're saying that this person made four or five hundred thousand dollars. And then we got fucking Dana White getting on the mic bragging about, oh, this is the 87th straight sellout in the gate of, you know, twenty four million dollars. You know, so how is the five highest fighter, uh, the highest paid fighter on the card making five hundred thousand? Like, Why is your cut of the money? Ninety percent like it just those numbers are highly inaccurate, but um I think like their biggest gate is like twelve million, um, but I understand what you're saying. But when they pulled up, if you guys are paying attention to the UFC's class action law, uh, when they pulled up the amount that these fighters were getting paid between like 2012 and 2016, um, they those disclosed pays that you see that pop up on like MMA Junkie, those things are really low. You know, it might say that that fighter made half a million on on an MMA Junkie, but really he pulled out with like two mil. Like in in uh, Nate versus Connor two, Nate made I think like five point eight million dollars, and if you go and you just Google like oh how how much did he make like it'll show like maybe like one million or something like that. Um, so those disclosed pay are can be drastically different um, mm-hmm. than what the fighters actually get paid. Now is that still enough? No, I think you know he could have made much more but i think that that's also the reason why like when you got people like um <clears throat> Jake Paul trying to egg on uh Nate Diaz talking about oh it's the highest you'll ever be paid it's not accurate cuz obviously Nate and them been out here getting cashed the fuck out that was 2016 he fought Conor right and for the for the <clears throat> second one mhm yeah. yeah you know what i mean so 
they've been getting cashed out. But I guess what I'm saying is, is that a lot of organizations, whether it's in MMA or in boxing, they don't have the unlimited funds to be able to throw this F you money out there. You know what I mean? God willing, Francis is making like 25 to 30 million mil in this next fight. You know what I mean? Great for him. Great for his family. Uh, but to expect the UFC to pay him 30 million isn't act isn't something that's ever gonna happen because that fight, let's say worldwide, him versus Tyson Fury, only sold, let's be generous and say 300 pay-per-views. 300,000 pay-per-views. <laughs> that's not enough. In the US alone, it only did 75. You know what I mean? So it oh, wow. wouldn't make sense from uh um uh a per it wouldn't make sense from a a UFC promoter or a boxing promoter to put on Tyson Fury versus um, Francis Ngannou, that very first fight, because 75,000 sales in a pay-per-view in the U.S., that's crazy. That you, you haven't even hit the minimum that I'm paying you out. So that's why I'm saying it gives the, uh, the, fight, the, the fans a skewed perspective as to, like, oh, what should and should not happen. But at the end of the day, um, the Saudis are making it happen. How do you guys feel about like like I, I think earlier CJ was saying that like they feel like you feel like the Saudis are like low key becoming like the combat sport, uh, the capital taking over like Vegas like which means that like people like me who live here in Vegas or people who live in the U.S. who may want to see a fight, um, and th whether they're flying to Atlantic City or somewhere else, um, won't necessarily have the same amount of funds to be able to fly over and go to Saudi Arabia to see a fight. How do you I feel think about with, that? with those kind of fights, I already know what it is. It, those are like the big pocket fights. You look in the the, the arena, you like celebrities here, celebrities there. It's a big, big time event. So I and know they pay those celebrities to come out. That's the other <laughs> thing. They pay them millions of dollars just to come and sit out there. Mm -hmm. They got money the long way out there. So, like you said, it's damn near unlimited money. So I feel like it's more of a. a what do you say, spectacle type of thing? Like, they're yeah. putting on the big, huge fights that we want to see. It's not going to be like a every day or every few months type of thing. It's kind of like a once a year, maybe twice a year type of thing that they're going to put on huge fights that are going to be out there that people are going to tune in to watch. I don't think it's going to be super often. And I know PFL is going out there, but, you know, that's not it's not going to be huge. So I'm right yeah. now. I'm I'm not minding it right now. I'm not minding it right now. How would you feel if, like, say, like, okay, some people on this pod they like basketball, they like American football. You know what I mean? Then all of a sudden, excuse me, they start sniping. They they decide that they want to have an American football league out there, right? Amer you know, because football is technically really soccer. I don't know why we call soccer soccer here in America. It's quite mm -hmm. silly. Uh, but you know what I mean? So then they start sniping your favorite NFL players, and they're creating their own league over there because they can pay them buku money. So, of course, these, fight of course these you know, NFL players are going to go play over there. Of course, these basketball players are going to go play over there for these leagues and stuff. Now, all of a sudden, the product here in the U.S. has been diluted because they snatching all the guys, all the stars, and, and they're over there playing in Saudi Arabia or inside just the Middle East in general. Like, can you? I think that that's possible because they have the money and the infrastructure. Well, not all, right? So, uh, I, I mean, obviously, I know that y'all aren't into the foosball as much as I am, but uh, there's a player <laughs> who plays for Real Madrid called Tony Cruz, who, you know, they threw the bag at him. And he was like, nah, I don't fuck with y'all. Because how y'all feel about uh, the LGBTQ plus community, you know. Mm. So sh shout out for him from standing on business. Because if you ever want to find Cody. out how someone really, really feels, throw money at their ass and see do they still stand on principles and values that they sometimes profess to the world. But in general, Sky, I feel what you're saying. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a problem. Right, it's it's a problem because it's going to start to it's going to start to dilute a lot of leagues. Um, yeah, let's give it up. That is our first time in 2024. Jason and I have agreed on something, you guys. Let's go. Let's go. Maybe um, the first time in the pod. <laughs> no, we've agreed on some stuff before. 
Yeah, we um, both agree that DDP is the real African champion. Oh, well, he hasn't won yet, so you know. Touche. We'll Touché. see. You need to make your pick. We're coming towards oh, you again. You, yeah, thank you. You, you try to sneak up out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come this on. is hard. It's a hard choice for his white brothers, man. You're gonna have to choose somebody. All bullshit aside, it's a hard choice because it's a fucking interesting fight. It's a very interesting fight. It's a very interesting it's fight. Very you know, because I was talking about it all day today. People are like, oh man, Sean Strickland is gonna his gas tank is better. He's gonna work him with the jab. He's gonna he's gonna drown him. Maybe TKO him 50-45. And then some people are like me, like me. I'm like, hey, maybe Drikas gets a TKO second round, maybe the start of the third round. But anything after that, we've never seen Drikas pass that. And that gas tank, I know his nose is fixed, but he does fight a little bit awkward. And, you know, fighting um, Derek Brunson and Darren Till, he looked weird as hell. But then he goes and fight Robert Whitaker, and he looks like a damn world beater against him. It, you don't never know who you're going to get with that guy. Yeah. And then yeah. Sean Strickland, you... He, he just comes down and just walks down Izzy and just he has and that's what I told him. One thing I do like about Sean Strickland is that he will fight. He's not he's he doesn't have a lot of power. He's not super athletic, but he is in there to to scrap. So it's gonna um, be super interesting. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna regret this. Fuck, I, it's like picking between your favorite fighters. Like who wants who wants to pick between that? Who who wants to pick between like? Some of their their favorite fight. CJ, I know you ain't booing. Shout out to <laughs> Valentino and Grosso, man. Where you but just them, like, nah. them two, your favorite fighters is crazy. I'm not that saying those two are, my, are, are my favorite fighters, but they're two of my favorite fighters, right? So it's, oh, just, man. it's hard. We can relate that it's, it's difficult to yeah, pick between yeah. like people who you really like. Damn, damn! I shit. I'll be like CJ, man. I'm just, I'm just here to watch. Oh, oh no, 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 no. no. You, you did that with the other. You did that with the other card. Okay, if that's the case, then we're gonna set a new precedent on this pod where you have to pick a fighter. You're the only one that chooses not to pick. CJ, I just gave an example. CJ I never did picked. He I never did it one time. Fight. <laughs> I did it one time. One you don't time. do it on the undercard. You don't do it for the female fight. Yeah. <laughs> Just because it's your two white brothers. Come on now. <laughs> if you had to bet, no emotions aside, if you had to bet. Gun to who, your head. Where are you going with? I would bet a decision. Um, points. Okay, fuck it. I'll I'll go uh I'll go to the the, the first real African champion, DDP. For a decision? Gonna... Yeah. I'm just a gen- Ooh. I, I'm Ooh. not going to lie. I was sitting here right now, and I was 100- y'all know I was 100% with DDP. And then CJ started talking about that H3 Hummer gas tank that Drink is the <laughs> pussy got. And now I'm sitting here shaking in my boots because I forgot about it, right? I uh, forgot about yeah. that, you know, because I don't like Sean so much. I was blinded by the fact that your boy being there. <sighs> <sighs> hey, hey, like it's not an H three. He he got an H two Humvee. Yeah, yeah the yeah. big body. army edition, <laughs> army edition from like ninety three. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Man, now you got me shook, CJ. That, it's, that it's, it's, is... it's like I said today. Like I was talking all day. It's just a super interesting fight. These two guys is like you don't never know who's gonna pull up into the octagon. And like I was talking, I was talking about Drake. It's like. He fights the weirdest and the awkwardest way, but he finds ways to win the fight. Fair. Yeah. He finds ways to win. So I don't fucking know. DDP, let's get it. You don't annoy me as much as Sean Strickland. What is it? Why, why, why does LaShawn annoy y'all? I'm, I'm, Bro, this wow. he's just a. Technically, based off of Jason's standards, y'all, he shouldn't even mess with Sean Strickland because Sean Strickland frequently uses the F bomb. And last, That's what we said last, last week, week. Last week he said, "Oh, I don't mess with Manil Cape. I'll always go against him. I don't mess with anybody who uses the f bomb." And then CJ pointed out the fact that Sean Strickland uses it probably more than anybody in the UFC. And your boy Jace had nothing to say about it. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So His face the whole time though. Hey, I made know. my pick. You know, it is what it was. <laughs> Are so... y'all ready for the? Uh... Go ahead, CJ. All four of us picked DDP. Oh, uh, DDP ain't gonna win. 
<laughs> we we normally ain't always on the same page with that. So last time, yeah, we no, did wait, that, wait, I don't know. No, 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 no. That's not true. Just this, we all had Jim card. Miller. We all had Jim what? Miller. We all had and Ankle Ankle Lyons. Lyons. Yeah, what you we started mean? twenty four right? right. We started it's twenty four right. It's, <laughs> it's a, a new year, year, y'all. Fucking Power Rangers over here. Fucking here uh, Voltron, Captain Planet, Captain Planet. That's what I was trying to think. I was like, "What's his name?" Hopefully, hopefully for February, y'all, y'all stay tuned. We really got to do the math for that one. Hey, yeah, we keeping the tracker for that one. And if y'all <laughs> wasn't here last year, y'all find out this year. Uh, with Facts. that being said. I feel like that's a re- oh no 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 real quick are y'all excited for the press conference because you got DD oh, I y'all, forgot about that shit y'all got Sean Strickland out here talking about he gonna stra- stab Drikus and ruin his own life if he mentions his father nah not me I think it's gonna be a weak press conference really yeah hmm. how how do you feel Jace about Sean Strickland? Feeling like what DDP said was was over Stop the it. line. Stop it. Go For shit who? in your hand. LaShawn, go shit in your hand. You 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 can't bring that much energy and not expect that pendulum to swing back, my guy. Just can't do it. We appreciate your honesty on that. Yeah. Well, hold on. Is that, that a, is that a, is that a saying? Go shit in your hand? Yes. Have you ever seen the That's film? like a... <laughs> She's out of my, my league. That's where I got it from. That's that's crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna start telling niggas that. Yo, get out of here. Go shit in your hand. <laughs> that's crazy. Hey, I'm a real one though, man. I, I didn't take credit for it, you. Heard? <laughs> yeah. Facts. 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 We I yo. Well, with that being said, y'all, we will be back next week to go over the results um, of UFC 297. <laughs> Until then, y'all make sure that y'all leave y'all comments down below. Let us know what y'all think about the podcast, what y'all think about our picks. And we are out. Peace. And this is Africa. Shamna, na, na, na. Eh, eh, waka, waka. <laughs>